just to introduce, uh, I work with uh, Nicholas Peter this year. We developed a new bioprocess micro coding course for four tiers. So we've got NSEs, NHs, and Red students. Um, quite an intense course. Um, Microcodics is is about very small channel networks. Biochemical engineers are interested in them because we can use very small devices to culture specialized cells, or we can carry out enzyme catalyzed reactions with a high degree of control. So it's uh, quite a useful part of our departmental work. However, it's quite a new field, generally speaking. I came into microfluidics through the chemistry background, chemical microfluidics and analysis. It's sort of graduating more and more engineering wise and more biological. Um, as part of the course, the students, we thought it would be a good idea if they, they'd be given an assignment, a design a chip that has a specific function, they're given a choice of three. And they're given the engineering details in the lecture and so on, so they know the channel dimension, the channel geometry that they have to play with. We constrain them to working in a very small, um, those chips are about six centimetres by two. Um, the inlets are fixed and they say, right, there's your, your box, draw any channel you like in there. Um, the process for this, we, I mean, we, we set up a number, we take them through the, the, the step by step, if you like, the design uh, session where they just sit down with pencil, paper, uh, illustrator, which actually proved to be the big bottleneck. The illustrator is not a very intuitive program, and we spent a lot of time explaining that. Uh, next year, there will be a video of how to illustrate. So they design the um, the the, the, the assignment chip. Then we take it down to we convert that into a, a file that can be used on uh, a laser cutter. And they cut it out of a piece of acrylic, a set of pieces of acrylic, and they, they can bomb that in an oven. And they have a, a chip that they can get liquid in and out of. And then another practical takes them in to getting them. And in this case, they're just using colored inks. But the way that they, they can connect that up to certain props, see what the effective flow rate is, you know, and play around with the chips in the lab. A lot of the practical work at this stage is just really open ended exploration, just so that they can get the concept of different flow regimes, different uh, flow rates, and so on. Um, now, the teaching challenges in this <coughs> it's quite a complex sequence of technical skills and but I've been in this field for quite some time and I've sort of, you, you forget how strange and counterintuitive flow is at this level. There's no turbulence, you get lambda flow. Nothing works the way you expect it to from the macro scale. And the skill set that you have to build up from the design and the fabrication are very, again, totally new. Um, so students coming out of with little or no experience are going to struggle with it. And then we, we do a similar course for postgraduates in uh, just a one year course where they, we, we take them to the lab and literally demonstrate things to them. And even then, we sort of realize that they don't really have any experience of this. We are limited as well in our laboratory time. The, the, the course runs for a term. It's just finishing this week. Um, and we have to get them in and they have to hit the ground running if they're going to get anything useful out of it. Um, students are assessed individually. Each student will have a their own chip they make, and they're assessed on how well that fits to the assignment. Will the chip work? Have they understood the concept behind it? So we found that uh, video tutorials would be a way of preparing the students for the laboratory classes. You can get them, you know, looking and seeing somebody doing the various things. That, oh yeah, we understand. So when they come into the lab, they have, have already seen it. And then the demonstrators can say, right, we're going to do this and this, you see this already, and what we're going to do. much more, I would say, uh, efficient way of getting the information across. We're not explaining things again and again because they already have at least some idea of what they're getting into. Um, the videos were filmed over the summer months. We had a, a project student come in, and at various random times, she would just take over a corner of the lab. Some postgraduate student would be right, they're going to do casting or molding or popping or milling or some, some technique. Um, and the, the student would be sat in front of the camera with the lab and talk about what to do. It was, they, they were quite professional about it. Um, and we were very impressed. I mean, the, the project students then took them, filmed 
several different angles, so that's whatever. Not quite a lot of time to generate a minute or two minutes of video, but the video is quite, um, quite impressive. It was very, very pleased with the results. Now the videos were uploaded to Moodle, and I'm going to dig out an example in a minute. Um, but they are also embedded into the lectures themselves, so when we're explaining, well, Nicholas Sita, when he was explaining a various, various concept, he would then pull out um, a video, right, and this is a student doing this kind of aspect of the work. So again, it reinforced the, uh, the, the information in the lecture. So let's go down to the other one. Take the second one, I think. Yeah. And this, this is just an example at the minute. And uh, there, there's James, one of our senior postdocs. He spent most of the summer sort of standing in front of the camera. But uh, and he, he's describing the overall fabrication and, and design and uh, maybe the you know there's milling and laser cutting and kind of, you know casting, smoothing. Thank you. 
There is there are several options. There is one where they have to design a chip that will take two fluid streams and mix them, uh, which is not a trivial exercise because on that scale, the fluid streams will run side by side in a, in a laminar sort of way. So they have to come find ways around that, using the knowing the the Reynolds numbers and the packet numbers and so on, so of of getting a good coherent mixing system going. There is uh, or they can design a chip that will have you've got a, a syringe pump that runs down to this flow rate, volumetric flow rate, that's your lowest flow rate you can get. Design a chip that when you'll have a resonant time so that reagents will stay this long with the chip before they come out. And it's all about understanding the, 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 the geometry of what they can and can't do. And that we do have fairly tight constraints on them, you know, that they can only etch so deep they, the, the chip must fit in a certain box. So that they have to be quite crisp. Then we, we leave it open to them and uh, we get some very creative uh, responses from that, which I was, I was pleasantly surprised at. I thought that would be just being straightforward serpentine chips. No, but they came up with all sorts of ideas. That. So is there an interactive time with the student? Yeah. Rather like a crisp situation where you have a one-to-one or a dialogue where the student can ask questions as to why they do it that way. Yeah. Um, there is the, the design class we've taken down to uh, our computer cluster, and we spent several sessions in there. Uh, it's a small class; there are only eight of them, um, and we were able to, you know, discuss the design with them in the design phase and, and sort of maybe head off some of the more ludicrous ideas before they spend too much time on it and think again about that. So we, we so again, there was that that element of uh, interaction with them. Yeah. At the, at the design stage, and then once they finalised the design, then we took it through and made things. And that, that was another powerful thing that they actually, you know, they get to keep their chip at the end, right? And they don't want to look. I mean, this, which is again a very powerful thing. So, thank you very much. Thank you for stepping in at the last minute, Brian. It's, uh,